The scene opens as Julian Mitchell can be seen deep in her thoughts. She is a young, kind, and compassionate woman. Her professor Gabrielle Emerson calls out her name multiple times but fails to get her attention until a student named Paul budges her slightly. Her train of thought comes to a halt, and she returns to reality where everyone in the room is already looking at her. Gabrielle is cold and strict but a brilliant professor. He isn't happy with Julian's daydreaming and even ridicules her in front of the class. Another student named Krista sees this as an opportunity to impress Gabrielle and answers his questions instead. Gabrielle is satisfied and continues with the lecture. Paul sees Julian in distress and passes her a note in which he makes fun of Gabrielle. His attempt to cheer her up succeeds and Julian smiles. This exchange doesn't go unnoticed by Gabrielle and he again scolds her. She hurriedly hides the note in her book whereas Paul takes all the blame. Gabrielle doesn't say much afterward but asks Julian to see him in his office after class. After class, Paul and Julian meet once again and he warns her against Krista. Krista is the teacher's pet and would do anything to stay that way. She is obsessed with Gabrielle and is even dreaming of marrying him one day. Once their conversation ends, Julian makes her way to Gabrielle's office, but before she can enter, she hears Gabrielle talking to someone on the phone. He seems distressed and his voice cracks as he apologizes repeatedly to the person on the other side of the phone. Julian thinks that it's probably unwise to disturb him right now so instead of entering, she sticks a handwritten apology note between the door and leaves. At home, Julian sadly looks over the picture that surprisingly is of Gabrielle. Gabrielle looks entirely different. He looks happy and young. As Julian is busy admiring the picture, her father calls her and after checking up on her, he gives her the news that fills her heart with pain. He informs her that the mother of her best friend passed away. That's when we find out that Gabrielle is Julian's best friend's brother. That explains why he was so distressed today. He couldn't be there for his mother and that made him feel guilty. The next day in university as Julian is grabbing some papers, the note falls out. Someone left the note for her and as she reads it, Julian's worst nightmare comes true. Yesterday instead of leaving the apology note at Gabrielle's office, she accidentally mixed it with Paul's note and put it there. The same note where Paul made fun of Gabrielle. Regret fills Julian's heart but it's already too late to do anything as the lady sitting near informs her that Gabrielle has officially asked to arrange an appointment with Julian. This meeting will be documented in her file and might damage her applications. The next day, Julian is entering Gabrielle's office when she sees Paul leaving. The sight of Paul makes her feel at ease a little bit. He offers to take her for a coffee and they exchange their numbers. Gabrielle is already waiting for Julian and calls out her name. She enters Gabrielle's office and the atmosphere inside is cold and hostile. As soon as she enters, Gabrielle doesn't hold back from insulting her. Julian accidentally drops her belongings, and he goes as far as calling her a comedian. He shouts at her when she brings up his family but then holds himself back. Everything that Julian does infuriates Gabrielle and there is no explanation for what he is feeling. Julian on the other hand is hurt and heartbroken. He thinks that it would be best if she changes her university. He doesn't want her anywhere near him. Without saying a word, Julian leaves silently. Later that day, as Gabrielle sits in his car, he notices Julian struggling in the heavy rainfall. Out of sympathy, he offers to drive her home which after a few seconds of hesitation, she accepts. The ride to her home is silent and awkward. Gabrielle is strangely attracted to her but quickly diverts his eyes. When they reach their destination, Gabrielle walks her to her apartment and the first thing he notices is how poor her living conditions are. He asks if Julian can even afford a proper meal and she proudly tells him that couscous is enough for her. Gabrielle wonders why she chose this university among all the others and Julian reveals that actually she wanted to go to Harvard, but her father couldn't afford the parental contribution. Gabrielle feels nothing but sympathy for her as he begins to understand her better. Everything seems to be going alright but when Julian mentions his mother who recently passed away, Gabrielle leaves abruptly. Julian thinks that she might have messed up their relationship which was improving, but a knock at the door surprises her. Gabrielle returns and informs her that he is taking her to dinner. Despite what had happened earlier in the university, Julian agrees when she sees that Gabrielle genuinely feels guilty about his behavior. As Julian comes out in a beautiful black dress, Gabrielle is instantly enchanted by her beauty. He takes Julian to a five-star hotel where she even further surprises him when he learns that she speaks perfect Italian. At first, Julian seemed ordinary, just like other girls, but the more he looks at her the more he realizes that she is different. The way she handles herself is different from the clumsy girl he was introduced to at first. Out of curiosity, he asks her what made her fall in love with Dante. Julian is taken aback by his sudden question and instead of telling him the whole truth, she vaguely only answers that a friend introduced her to this vast subject. She is hiding something and is not ready to reveal it yet. The next day Rachel, Gabrielle's sister and also Julian's childhood friend is visiting when she unexpectedly sees Julian. Both meet enthusiastically and Gabrielle sees them. He is confused and then Rachel reveals to him that she is her friend. 
Despite Gabriel's protests, Rachel invites Julian over to their house to spend some quality time together. Julian is amazed at how lavish and beautiful Gabriel's apartment is compared to hers. Rachel leaves them for a moment and Gabriel takes Julian into his office. He shows her an old copy of Dante from the 16th century and the bliss on her face amuses Gabriel. Julian is surprised but more at the fact that he decided to show her his most secret and prized possession. This indicates that finally, Gabriel is beginning to let his guard down around her. Things seem to be going well but when the topic of couscous, Julian's favorite dish, comes up, she accidentally drops the wine glass she is holding and cuts herself. Gabriel is again agitated by her sudden outburst. He takes her to the bathroom and treats her wounds himself while she whimpers in pain. Again things end on a sour note when he reminds her that he is her professor and she should be careful around him. Through a glimpse into the past, we see the actual nature of their relationship. The truth which even Rachel is unaware of. Young and lively Julian happily arrives at Rachel's residence, but when she enters their home, she is shocked to see everything inside is a mess and Rachel is crying in the corner. Upon asking, Rachel reveals that it's all Gabriel's fault. He returned home and all hell broke loose. His temper got the best of him and he broke everything in the house. Julian consoles Rachel and is on her way to check up on their mother when she sees Gabriel sitting alone outside. This is the first time that she has ever seen him. Julian walks slowly and sits beside him. Gabriel seems to be bruised and in pain yet drinks away his sorrows quietly. He acknowledges her presence and offers her a beer. Gabriel seems completely different in the past. Cold and reserved Gabriel easily opens up to Julian as he tells her that he feels he is unworthy to be his mother's son. Gabriel thinks he only brings her pain but when Julian reassures him that his family loves him, he strangely believes her and feels peace. Julian is an angel that Gabriel direly needed. He asks her to go on a walk with him and Julian agrees. Gabriel gently holds his hand and feels the joy to know that he is the first boy she has ever held hands with. On their way, Gabriel reveals that he lost something and is in search of it. Julian asks if it's here what he lost but his only answer is that it's gone forever. Gabriel takes her to his favorite spot which is filled with apple trees. He looks at her and feels a strong resemblance between Julian and Dante's Beatrice. Julian is Gabriel's Beatrice. Feeling bad for jeopardizing the dinner which his mother had planned, he plucks an apple and offers it to Julian as a replacement. They eat in silence while Gabriel keeps stealing glances at Julian and would smile whenever she would catch him. As the day gets darker, they lie beside each other on the grass under the sky. Julian has never been this close to anybody and feels warmth radiating from him. She begs him to stay but he cannot. He has to leave the next day, but Julian promises him that she will find him, even if he is in hell. They kissed and this was the first and the last time they ever talked. We are back in the present where Gabriel gives Rachel his credit card so she can buy Julian whatever she likes, especially a new bag. Her old bag is a little too ancient according to Gabriel's taste and needs to be replaced. Back in the university, Paul takes Julian to his study carol that he shares with Gabriel. Once there, Paul tells her that Gabriel actually checked up on her. He asks some professors why they couldn't afford to give her the needed scholarship even though she scored highest among the others. Julian is shocked to learn this but still thinks that he only did that because he hates her, just to make sure that she was telling the truth. In an effort to impress Julian, Paul gives her the keys to the joint study carol so that she can come here anytime. At home, Julian receives the wrapped gifts from an unknown sender. Beautiful black heels and an elegant green dress take her breath away. Rachel calls her and tells her that she is the one who sent her these. Gabriel forbade Rachel to not disclose that he paid for them. Just like Julian, he too thinks that she hates him and wouldn't accept it if she knew he was the one paying for it. In hopes of spending some time with her childhood friend, Rachel takes Gabriel and Julian to the club. Gabriel is a VIP guest, and they are taken to a private lounge. Rachel has sensed the tension between Julian and Gabriel, so she acts as the perfect wingman and asks Julian about her day spent with Paul. Gabriel's ears perk up as the question is raised while Julian naively tells Rachel that they had a good time together. Gabriel hears this and is in a rage but controls his anger. Rachel ignores him and instead takes Julian to the dance floor. Julian slowly sways to the beats as the music becomes louder but Gabriel's gaze never leaves her. A man comes up to Julian and starts dancing with her. The man's joy of dancing with the pretty girl doesn't last long as Gabriel, out of nowhere, appears and snatches her away. Filled with anger, he takes her back to the lounge. Julian is surprised and confused at his sudden outburst. She thought that her dancing with the man was completely normal and never expected Gabriel to intervene like that. Gabriel, instead of talking about it, further makes her taste his drink but insists that he should be the one feeding her. He looks intensely into her eyes as she takes the sip. Julian finds the drink horrendous but for Gabriel, it's something he cannot resist. He calls her naive, insinuating that she cannot handle herself in places like clubs. Julian is offended and leaves in a fit of fury. Gabriel laughs as he finds her little outburst adorable. Club's bouncer, Ethan, asks Julian to help him in conversing with his Italian girlfriend. Julian, being the kindest soul, agrees but unfortunately for them, Gabriel sees them. He misinterprets their conversation and thinks that she gave him her number. Once Ethan is gone, blinded with jealousy, Gabriel pins Julian to the wall. 
She looks into Gabriel's eyes. His actions pierce her heart. Gabriel sees her breaking and lets go of her. This time instead of being aggressive, he gently takes her hand and asks if she wants to dance with him. Seeing his softer side, Julian agrees and he takes her to the dance floor. They dance slowly and Gabriel cannot help but feel as if he knows her from before. He calls her Beatrice just like he did in the past. He may have forgotten her but he is still the same person. Julian mentions that this is the first time that she has ever danced with someone like this. Gabriel tells her that if that's the case, he is glad to be her first. Hearing him say that again makes Julian's heart cry in pain, and she leaves abruptly. In the next scene, Rachel comes to meet Julian at her apartment and gives her the bag she bought for her. Instead of keeping it a secret, Rachel chooses to tell her that it is actually from Gabriel. When Julian hears this, at first, she refuses to take it, but Rachel successfully convinces her. Furthermore, she reveals that Gabriel's birth mother passed away when he was just a child and then Rachel's parents adopted him. His birth father also passed away a few months ago and left him with a huge inheritance. That's one of the reasons why Gabriel hates himself. He thinks he will never be enough for anyone. Paul takes Julian for some coffee. There, they joke around, but their banter quickly turns awkward when Julian suddenly kisses Paul. Shortly after, Krista comes up to them and insults Julian unprovoked. She tries to insinuate that Gabrielle favors her over Julian and tells her that he is taking her somewhere nice after they discuss her thesis proposal. Her plan to bring Julian down would have succeeded if Gabrielle had not appeared out of nowhere. Not only did he hear everything that Krista said about Julian but also scolds her for it. He makes it clear that he thinks that Julian is the smartest person in the room. After embarrassing Krista, Gabriel walks over to his table and sits while she follows him quietly. When Julian sees Gabriel, she suddenly feels guilty about what happened earlier between her and Paul. She apologizes to him but Paul is understanding. He lets her know that he will wait for her until she is ready until then they can continue their relationship the same as it was before. From afar, Gabriel sees Paul and Julian sitting closely together but doesn't say anything. Julian later finds out that she is awarded $5,000 from MP, Emerson Bursary per semester. Gabriel goes to his study carol but instead finds Julian there asleep. Next to her is a notebook on which she had doodled Gabriel's name. He sees it and feels warm inside. As Gabriel is busy looking at the notebook, Julian suddenly wakes up, and seeing Gabriel there, she panics. Hurriedly she tries to grab her things but instead almost faints due to lightheadedness. Gabriel is there to save the day and before she can hit the ground, he quickly holds her. He lets go of her only when he is sure that she wouldn't fall again. Gabriel is amused as he sees a stuffed animal in Julian's briefcase, but his mood shifts completely when he learns it's from Paul. Instead of showing rage or anger, Gabriel politely asks Julian to come with him for dinner, and she gladly agrees. At the restaurant, Gabriel notices that Julian is feeling cold, and without a second thought, he takes off his sweater and gives it to her. Although the sweater is way too big for her, she wears it nevertheless and looks quite adorable in it. Gabriel notices that she wants to say something but is hesitant, so he encourages her to say whatever is in her heart. Julian takes out the letter from MP, Emerson's bursary and pushes it over to him. She strictly clarifies that she would not accept any rewards from him as this can damage their student-professor relationship. Gabriel hears this and cannot help but feel hurt by her words. In the start, he was the one who advocated pure professionalism between them but as time went on, he became more comfortable around her. Now he wants her more as a companion or a friend rather than his student and he lets her know that. He didn't mean to offend her when he sent her that letter but only wanted to award her excellence. Gabriel proudly tells her that in his eyes, she holds great importance, and would never think of buying her with money. When Julian hears his reasoning, all her doubts and suspicions disappear, and she accepts it with a smile. At that moment, Gabriel's phone rings, and it's someone named Paulina. Julian senses that it's important as he leaves to attend it. When he returns, he tells Julian something urgent came up and he has to leave. Julian holds his hand in hopes that he might stay, and for a moment, Gabriel considers it, but with the promise of seeing her again, he leaves abruptly. Julian is once again left alone, wondering if he might return. Julian is walking past the same club where she went with Rachel and Gabriel when Ethan sees her and stops her. He informs her that Gabriel is inside and he is super drunk. Knowing that she is his friend, he asks Julian to help him. She agrees and when she enters inside, Julian is surprised to see him with Krista. Gabriel appears to be very drunk as he smiles and laughs at whatever Krista says. Julian knows that Krista wouldn't let him leave with her so she comes up with a plan. A waitress walks past them and deliberately spills a drink on Krista's dress. Fuming with anger, she walks into the bathroom and Julian sees this as an opportunity for her to get him. She walks up to him and as soon as Gabriel sees her, he smiles. After a series of jokes about Julian's couscous, Gabriel finally agrees to leave with Julian and before Krista can come back, they are already gone. They reach his apartment, but Gabriel is so intoxicated that he cannot even stand still. Julian holds him tightly as they walk slowly toward his apartment. 
Once they are at the entrance, Julian is ready to leave when Gabriel proudly announces that he lost his keys. With a sigh, Julian begins searching for the keys and eventually finds them. She helps him inside and is determined to get him to his room safely. Gabriel on the other hand has other plans. He abruptly stops and tells her that he wouldn't move until she kisses him. Julian gets scared and asks him not to hurt her. Gabriel tenderly reassures her that he can't even think about hurting her and they share a moment. After that, they are on their way to his room when Gabriel suddenly vomits. Not only does he get his clothes dirty, but also Julian's dress, which ends up being the innocent victim of the incident. She takes him to the bathroom and helps him in letting everything get out of his system. Julian leaves him for a moment and looks for some clothes. She finds some and changes into Gabriel's clothes. Julian returns where she finds Gabriel sitting idly in the bathroom. Gently, she goes up to him and helps him in removing his clothes. Julian notices a tattoo on Gabriel's chest and is surprised to see that it's some woman's name, Maya to be exact. Julian wonders who this person is as she has never heard this name. Even Rachel never told her about this person. Nevertheless, Julian ignores it for the time being and takes Gabriel to his bed. She lays him down and at that moment Gabriel looks into her eyes. He asks her to never leave him, and a single tear falls from his eye. This is the most vulnerable he has ever been. Julian promises that she never will, and he closes his eyes. Suddenly, his cell phone rings and Julian has no option but to pick it up. As she does, a woman's voice comes from the other end who appears to be very angry. She introduces herself as Paulin and demands that Julian wakes Gabriel up. She is the same woman who called Gabriel earlier. Julian tries to reason with the lady, but she appears to be impatient and rude as she insults Julian while continuously asking her to give the phone to Gabriel. Julian nervously ends the call and is about to leave when Gabriel suddenly stops her. He holds her arm as he looks intensely into her eyes. Out of nowhere, he calls her Beatrice, and this shocks Julian. She wonders if he remembers her and Gabriel confirms it by saying that she found him. He finally remembers her and takes her in a warm embrace. They confess their love for each other and spend the night together. The next day, Julian wakes up early and does all the chores. She cleans his clothes and even makes him breakfast. All the while, she keeps smiling, thinking of the last night. Julian takes out a page and writes a note for Gabriel to read. She writes everything that is in her heart about how she had given up hope. But when, last night, he saw for who she truly is, she felt alive again. Gabriel has woken up and when he comes outside, he is shocked to see Julian in his house. He doesn't remember anything from last night. When Julian sees him, she accidentally drops an egg and tries to clean it but Gabriel rudely asks her to get off the floor. This infuriates Julian and she warns him never to speak to her like that ever again. Julian has had enough and is not going to tolerate any more humiliation. She gets up quickly and starts to collect her things. Gabriel is scared that they might have crossed the limit last night, but Julian tells him to rest assured as nothing happened. She reveals that she actually saved him as Krista was ready to take advantage of his drunken state. All the while Julian is telling him this, she doesn't stop picking up her stuff and is determined to get out of the apartment as soon as possible. Gabriel apologizes if he hurt her last night, but Julian tells him that he only hurt her with his words. He broke her. Gabriel sees the note and reads it but Julian has already left his apartment. He follows her and confronts her about signing the note as Beatrice. Julian is already in the elevator by the time Gabriel asks her why she called herself Beatrice, and Julian tells him why. She reveals that he was the one who asked her to come and save him, even if he is in hell. She sadly looks at him as she tells him she doesn't care if he is in hell anymore. He was her first kiss. Gabriel remembers the past now and tries to stop her but the doors to the elevator have already closed. He calls her Beatrice one last time, but she is not his anymore.